Since the white pot picture is still filled with the uh, content from the last module, I want to do a quick excursion that could be helpful for people who work interdisciplinary. For example, uh, I implementing algorithms from physics, chemistry, or biology. So um, let's be a physicist for a moment. So what do physicists do? Physicists, biologists, and chemists mostly observe nature. So for example, a famous physicist, uh, you know, it, so the story goes, um, observed not trees, but apples falling from a tree. And what he found out is that if you have an apple, that the, the energy um, uh, of the apple can be described as potential energy. Um, and then in the beginning, the potential energy of the apple is the full energy, basically, of that system. And the kinetic energy, as the apple is still hanging from the tree, is zero. So now, as the apple falls down from the tree, you'll figure out that in the end, the kinetic energy will be maximized. And the potential energy will go to zero. In total, it's called the law of conservation of energy, which is basically saying that E pot plus E kin will always be together uh, a constant. So we cannot lose or create any energy. So now let's take a quick look just um, at the original tree that we still have on the whiteboard. So remember when we said there's information and there's uncertainty, and we reduced uh, uncertainty by adding information. Well, it turns out if we sum up the information and the uncertainty, the sum of those actually equals a constant. So instead of calling this information an uncertainty, an easier way to think about this is to think about, OK, observed information, which is just information as we know it, but is now connected to data. This is data as observations, observed information, plus uncertainty, which we can just call potential information. It's the information we're still to get is constant, right? And in fact, it is the maximum information we can ever get uh, um, in the system. So that will absolutely um, correlate with that the observed energy, I call this observed energy because you can convert kinetic energy to electrical energy and so on and so forth, um, that the observed energy plus the potential energy is also a constant, or in our case, delta E. So now, um, that's an interesting coincidence. Now we could ask ourselves, OK, um, is there any better connection than just you know, this coincidence? And in fact, there is. Um, formalizing this connection is a lot harder um, than on this, on this whiteboard, but ultimately, we can think. Um, so we think, we'll, we'll find out that if, if we want somehow to say that information is equivalent to, to energy, we need to find basically a two-way um, street that gives us from one to the other. That means energy implies information, and information implies energy. So interestingly enough, energy implies information. That means whenever we have energy, we need to have information, we've already pretty much settled. When, because we said it's observed information. So we need data to observe energy, right? In fact, in general, anything we know about the universe is information. There's nothing we can do uh, or know about the universe without going through information. Um, everything unobservable is speculation. So basically, when we have, uh, when we have um, observed information, um, that observed, that observation already implies information. So now, how is information, why does information need energy? Well, information needs energy because, um, or information implies energy because um, we have something called the Landau limit. The Landau limit 
was uh, introduced a couple decades ago and actually just empirically um, verified a couple years ago. Um, but what it says is that the energy, the minimum amount of energy to not, you know, uh, it go against the laws of thermodynamics and all of these, to make a decision is KBT ln2. So KBT ln2 means um, you have the Boltzmann constant, which is uh, making everything nice and normalized to joule, times the temperature in Kelvin times ln2. And from the ln2, we already see um, what this is. This obviously is the choice, the binary choice um, that we have here. So one bit of information um, requires at least this energy. So if we were building a computer to simulate this program, it would need two times kT ln2 because we need, the, we need to simulate these two bits. And of course, we need a little bit of energy to also verify this rule. So moreover, we need to think about another connection, and that is the mystic word entropy. So entropy was defined by Shannon and also by Gibbs. Shannon being a mathematician and a pioneer in information theory, and Gibbs being a really world-renowned physicist who also um, invented stuff um, uh, like uh, vector products and and uh, the free energy formula. But the interesting thing here is, for now, the Shannon entropy is minus sum pi log 2 pi, while the Gibbs entropy, interestingly enough, is minus sum pi ln pi. So first of all, we can see that the base is different, um, which in the logarithm um, means nothing else but uh, it's a factor of, right? So it's actually not even a big factor of because log 2 and ln are like something like 0.69 apart. Um, but the question though is what do these formulas describe? Um, and so in order to understand that, we just need to be a physicist f for a minute. So a physicist does not, like a computer scientist, program this tree, right? So the physicist does not know about this program. For, for the physicist, this is nature, right? For biologists, chemists too. This is nature. So a physicist would sit there and also doesn't know about the tree, right? So physicist sits here and observes. And the physicist observes the outcomes, right? So the outcomes are those. So in this case, we don't know that there's a reason for the referee tossing a coin and the guest team picking a coin. It would just be, ha, huh, with 50% chance, we get a win, and with 50% chance, we get a loss. And what happens here is that, obviously, these formulas describe exactly um, this uncertainty. Th these formulas are not made for such simple trees. I mean, obviously, if, if you put the, the two probabilities in, you will exactly find that the answer is 2 here. 2, of course, corresponding to 2 bits of information. So 2 bits of information is exactly the amount of information that comes out of this tree, as we have two sum symbols with equal probability, and that two times. Um, so um, Gibbs, however, didn't use uh, the binary decision tree or algorithms to get to his formula. What he was thinking about is the following. Let's say you have a physics, chemistry, or biology experiment, and a lot of things happen in the experiment. But what you can ultimately do is you can slice up the experiment in the smallest unit. The best way to think about this is basically saying, OK, whatever recording we make of that experiment, we basically sample from that experiment. So now, as we have these samples, which are here uh, visualized as sort of these rectangles, we can ask ourselves, what is the probability of an outcome for each of these samples? And um, that is basically the exact same observation of just a much more complicated tree than we have here uh, based on our algorithms. And so um, this gives us an idea of how information and energy are connected.